I don't know why you would want to purposefully do that, but hey, to each his own, man, I ain't judging. Maybe some people want to live in a fascist village and be like, man, you know what? I like to get dominated. I'm into the BDSM form of government. <laughs> Dominate me, daddy. Tell me what to do. You are weird. What's good, fam? Teacher ready and... The Minecraft expert. The Minecraft expert. Today's video, we're going to be doing extreme ideologies through Minecraft villages. Yes. So this uh, recommendation came from Michael Klein. Thank you, Michael. Uh, and thank you for your uh, donation as well. If I'm doing a video about Minecraft, I got to bring in the expert over here. Because uh, daddy don't know nothing about no Minecraft. And I'm too old for this. Sh Let's get started. Hello, I'm FKX Toycat. And one of the common problems of the modern world is that people want to be political extremists, but they can't work out which faction to be political extremists for. I mean, it's such a common problem when you want to be extreme, but you don't know which extreme is the best extreme, which is why I'm making today's video, because as you all do know, the first thing people turn to when they want political advice is, of course, Minecraft videos. <laughs> Duh! Whenever I think about political advice. All right, students, uh, get your controllers out because you're going to play some Minecraft. Um, I mean, you know, and I love the fact that people want to be extreme, but they don't know which extreme is the most extreme. So today we're explaining political extremism through this Minecraft village and the various changes it undergoes. <laughs> So, in the libertarian village, most of the villagers are incredibly wealthy from trading. However, there are no iron golems, so the village gets raided and everyone dies. I wanted to add, have you noticed that the Minecraft villager villagers look like Squidwards? Uh, yeah, I guess. By their big noses. Ma their big noses? Yeah. Alright. Let's get extreme. What are we going to be extreme about? Big noses. Yeah. <laughs> Get rid of anyone who has a big nose. Squid. Hitler tried that back in the 30s and 40s. Well, he did. Yeah. Uh, fascism. In the fascist village, the village itself looks really bad. The villagers themselves are doing really bad, but at least they all know they're not one of those other types of villagers. Oh. In the- Oh, damn. I, lo I love how, uh... Okay, uh, let's just keep going. In the primitivist village, everyone destroys their houses, and of course the walls that separate them, and instead all of the villagers live off the land and of course eat rabbits, which arguably makes them happier. Man, what's wrong with eating rabbit? I've had rabbit. Rabbit's delicious, man. Rabbit stew? Yeah, I ate Bugs Bunny. You I ain't nothing wrong with it. Person. And I know industrialization uh, has created amazing advancements, right? You know, we got cell phones, we got televisions, we have cars, we have airplanes. Because if we didn't have all this stuff, you wouldn't see us. Exactly. We wouldn't be on YouTube right now talking to you. Yeah, nobody would. Exactly. So at the same time, I understand the negative impact it has on the planet and everything else. And there are better ways to do things. But at the same, I mean, I guess, I mean, some people, you know, you know simple as fudge and just like, man, give me a hut uh, and I'm going to live off the land. But I don't know why you would want to purposefully do that. But hey, to each his own, man, I ain't judging. Maybe some people want to live in a fascist village and be like, man, you know what? I like to get dominated. I'm into the BDSM form of government. <laughs> Dominate me, daddy. Tell me what to do. You are weird. I am weird. <laughs> Under monarchism, all of the villagers farm and work for the monarch's benefit, and in exchange, some of that wealth is very generously given back to the village. But I mean, it could be worse, right? Absolute monarchism, uh, trickle down uh, economics, kind of. He's being, I mean, I like this, this is, this is fun, uh, but this is like, you know, not even like oversimplified or simple types of history. This is like the most basic rudimentary and very stereotypical, uh, definition of all these different forms of ideologies. But so far, you know, I'm with it. Oh, here we go. Communism. Under communism, everybody farms. However, all food belongs to the state. However, the state decides that everyone starves to death. There you go. You know what? I, I can't fault it, man. I can't fault. He pretty much described Stalin. He's like, hey, man, World War II, what happened? Um, Stalin was like, everybody can starve. I mean, everybody gets on Marie Antoinette because she's like, let them eat cake, even though she never actually said that. Uh, but Stalin was literally like, uh, let them eat dirt. You know, let them eat each other. 
In the French village, <coughs> all the villagers are permanently on strike. And also, no one can understand what they're saying. By the way, I know a lot of people are going to say this isn't the actual French flag. I know this is a common misconception because the most common flag flown on the French battlefield looks something like this. Oh, damn! Did you catch that? Yeah. Did you catch that? Misconception because the most common flag flown on the French battlefield looks something like this. The white flag of surrender. <laughs> going in on the French. Man, for some reason, we were talking a lot about the French yesterday. People were making mad jokes about the French and surrendering in class. Yes. So this village is exactly the same as all of the other villages, except a few of its houses are a bit further away than normal. With as much as a quarter of the world being covered in houses, which are from this exact same village. True. In this village, there's a lot more emphasis on the church. And so instead of farming, we pray to the deity that all of the crops will grow, but they don't, so we all starve and start dying. Yeah, that, that sounds like a lot of cultures throughout history. Yo, man, let's pray to the god of corn that this, you know, we have a good corn season. I mean, they did farm, though, but they did rely a lot on the gods. If, if there was a food god, like, like, who would you want to be a food god? Like, which food deserves a god, you think? I'm gonna go with pizza. Ice cream. Ice cream? The ice cream god? Yeah. Pray to the ice cream gods for Rocky Road. Oh. <laughs> oh, pray to the pizza gods, man. Extra pepperoni. Yeah. I'm all about that pepperoni, man. Put that pepperoni all up in my mouth. Uh, oh, National so Socialism. National Socialism. Shirt for Nazi. No, I'm just kidding. But they were called the National Socialist Party. Which is a really great idea that has absolutely never been tried in real life before. All we have to do is build really nice roads for everyone to enjoy and then kill all of the villagers with big noses. Oh. Damn, he went there. Oh my god. He went there. You okay? You... Did I call it? Did I call it or not? You called it. Right in the beginning. Yep. As soon as he said the squid word with big noses, I... Right there. National Socialism. Kill all the villagers with big noses. Although, come to think of it, that's probably not such a great idea given the population of the village. Also, just in case you do see some historic precedent here, the roads actually weren't uh, instigated by... Uh, a certain leader that might have had tendencies towards both nationalism and socialism and uh, basically that's a reference to uh, a lot of people uh, still say and believe that hitler built uh, the autobahn uh, hitler did not build the autobahn the autobahn was already uh, was already there so so i think that's what he was referring to and uh, basically because of that you got to bear in mind that it was actually kind of a weimar project that was headed up by a certain man with certain mustached policies. That ain't right, man. Under Juche socialism, we cut ourselves off from the outside world, and then we get to pretend that we're doing the best. Oh, Although yeah. in reality, building a wall so big is probably a bit too expensive and probably takes away from the well-being of our people. But if you never see any of the people, then we can lie and we can just say they're doing just great inside those houses they definitely live in over there. No slums here, that's for sure. Just a beautiful, glorious state under our supreme leader. Uh, does that remind you of any country? A country that wants to wall itself off and say that it's the greatest country on earth? No. Yeah, kind of reminds me of a country. Who is it? Uh, America. Oh. In the globalist village... Socialist. Socialism is bad. Hold on, I gotta go and get my social security check. BRB. There is no war anymore. But instead, all of oh, our shit. villagers are leather workers, and they export all of their leather armor to other villages. This might sound like a criticism, but leather armor is really cheap now, so we've got that going for us. I mean, it's, it's, uh, I mean, it's better than nothing. Netherite armor is... You need that chainmail. No, the netherite armor is the strongest, though. It, if you fall in lava, you barely even die from it. You barely, Damn. You barely even... What's it called? Netherite. Another right? Yeah. Uh, it doesn't even burn whenever you throw it in It's also it. really cheap to Crazy. make the banners that describe exactly where we're at, which is why we've got the one true flag in bulk quantity today. This is a couple of flags I could get used to seeing side by side. Wouldn't it be wacky if instead of farming all of the crops, we just farm potatoes? Yeah. I love it, man. He's just going for all the stereotypes. I love it. You, you are brilliant, sir. Absolutely subscribe brilliant. To him now. Yeah, subscribe to him. Link is in the description. Me too. Yeah, subscribe to me too, of course. The corporatist village is very wealthy, and most of the villagers own their own homes, but they do so by working in a giant office every single day, nine to five. 
They feel locked inside. They feel like their life has no meaning. They feel like they are trapped in this office for every single hour of every single day. But deep inside them, they realize even though they have all of the physical possessions they could ever want, their life has next to no meaning. Trying to fill the void of- Yo, I feel like personally targeted right now, man. Why? Personal, th this was my life for over 20 years. Oh, yeah. Uh, except there's no 9 to 5. 9 to 5, like, doesn't exist. More like 9 to, uh, yeah, like 1 o'clock in the morning. Oh my god, yeah. If they're left over time with something that just makes them feel less alone. But they are always alone. They are always alone or they are always working. Oh, god damn, feel... man, stop it! You're depressing the hell out of me right now. It's okay, it's okay, you have me. <laughs> oh my just god, one more I, yeah, video, I That'll be the I thing that it. fixes it, but it never really is. On the stop. other hand, though, being rich is pretty swell because, I mean, who doesn't want enchanted golden apples? So oh, we Swiss. live in the mountains, but we have a lot of gold, and no one's really sure where it all came from in the end. Don't worry, man. Don't, don't ask. What's the point in explaining this one? We're all doomed anyway, so why even try? Fair enough. <laughs> that pretty much sums up nihilism. That's lava. Lava, yeah. The orange thing. Lava! <laughs> So we don't really have any policies or any progress or anything that actually keeps us going forwards. So instead, we'll base everything on the color of you know our skin. As you can see, this villager's skin is yellow because he's from a jungle. So we're going to deport all the villagers that don't look like the superior villagers because we're clearly the best based on that color. That's right. We just politely ask people to leave and then they all mysteriously do. Mysteriously, it just happens. It's like when I was doing the reaction to the Battle for Castle Itter yesterday. I love how they referred to the castle being handed over to the Nazis. I'm like, pretty much that's like saying a thief uh, robs you at gunpoint and you handed your wallet over to them. No, they didn't hand over, they took it. So we finally work out a system that manages to separate the church and the state, that manages to give everybody a voice, and that manages to avoid violence for the vast majority of villagers, and that all that involves is an election. However, nobody votes in the election, and then everybody complains that politicians suck. Like this guy, what's he even doing? And all politicians suck, that's what I say. Grumble, grumble, grumble. So there are no longer any elections. Instead, we put a librarian village in charge because he looks the smartest and probably knows the most. Fair enough. Can probably work out public policy decisions based on his expertise that he's gained in the library that he spent some time in. Yep, yep this definitely seems like a better version of democracy to me. Absolutely. Oh, damn. Oh, oh damn, he didn't even have to say nothing. He's like, yeah. Poison potatoes. Potatoes. No, potato they're famine. They're, they're yeah, the potato famine. Yeah. So everybody likes emeralds, right? Why yes. don't we duplicate until mm -hmm. everybody has billions of emeralds? What if everyone had all the emeralds all of the time? That well, be our worthless. currency is worthless because everyone has billions of it, and this is all the British's fault is what I've taken away from this. Pretty much. That's like uh, after World War One. Uh, when uh, Germany was uh, in, you know, uh, debt after the Treaty of Versailles, uh, because they take all the, well, they don't take it. Uh, it's just pretty much everyone is like, yeah, we're blaming you, Germany. Like, Germany was Tina Turner, and the rest of the world was Ike. And like, yeah, it's all your fault. Why are you making me hit you? Stop making me hurt you. And they were like, yeah, and you owe us $33 billion. And they printed money. And they printed money. They're like, yo, man, we're just going to print more money. And then the money became worthless. Remember, they, they were paying people twice a day and money was so worthless that kids were just building like money houses. Yeah. Uh, people were walking around with wheelbarrows of money. There's no food left in the village. So we find the oldest villager and we're going to kill him and eat his flesh. It's just the logical course of action. So Absolutely. there you go. I hope this video helped to radicalize you, helped to get you on board of some of those extreme ideas. The way he presented it was, again, because he's saying uh, it's so ridiculous, uh, you know, the, most of these I ideologies are ridiculous at their true core base. Uh, so he does present them in these funny ways using and using Minecraft villages. I mean, it's definitely something that's going to catch people's attention, uh, especially the younger kids. It's just my only advice, of course, is, I mean, you know, it's all fun and games and everything else. But, you know, there, of course, is a little bit more involved in there. But I really enjoyed that. What do you think? I loved it. It was it was pretty good, man. You sc you schooled me on on the leather. Leather apparently can be used as an armor. It's worthless in Minecraft, no matter what.
Oh, it's where it's listed Minecraft. All right, there you go. I don't know nothing about nothing about nothing about nothing about Minecraft. I don't know. Anyway, I've been Teacher Ready. And I've been the Minecraft escort. Expert. All right, and we'll catch you next time. Fam! And as always, shining out the Patreons who keep things running here, starting with the Chancellors Elena G, Nazvanyu, Douglas C, KP, The Hollow King, The Principals, Aaron Shepard, Addison, Clement, Vijandra, Rachel, Alex, King Panda, Freeman, Moody Kakati, Nathan, Chad. Chris DeBoggle, Sophia Robin, Lord Gandalf, Luna, Harry, Robin, and Blue Tech. And of course, Rasmus. I've been Teacher Eddie, and I'll catch you next time.